Back around about 1996, I tried making some beer signs, uh, LED beer signs, for a, a local company in Glasgow called Tenants. Now, Tenants' logo was just a big red T, and it's a very simple logo, it's, uh, so it's excellent for doing an LEDs. And I approached them and designed some signage, but to be honest, they didn't really click with it and I'm not sure what the problem was. I, I think it might have been the fact that they wanted finished products served up by a man in a suit and a guy turning up in a sweatshirt and jeans with basically prototypes just didn't do it for them. But um, here's what I came up with. This was the, the simplest. It, basically it's a red tea with LEDs and it had a resistive dropper and it basically ran directly from the mains and it was designed to be made out of basically just two sheets of circuit board material, one with the LEDs mounted on it and the other as a backing plate as insulation with uh, edging as well for uh, closing the edges. And in this version I've got two chunky resistors mounted under here. Uh, actually there's a wee sort of plate in the back as well, ventilated plate, but I, if I was doing it again I would choose to spread the resistors all over the, the back of it to actually spread the dissipation a bit. However all the LEDs are in series as a bridge rectifier and it looks visually quite nice, it's simple and would last for ages. But, uh, that was uh, one of the versions. The more sophisticated version with the background colour they were using at that time was this one with a microcontroller, a PIC microcontroller and a ULN2803 driver basically chasing these LEDs. They were actually they're wired in series parallel uh, arrays so, the, but interwoven so that they actually chased round the outside and the pattern would repeatedly change and you could adjust the speed. They didn't like the fact the circuitry was visible in the middle of it, they didn't like that uh, exposed nature. I could have actually put in that back, that stuff in the back, but they just, uh, yeah, they weren't that keen. Uh, the next one, which they really missed a trick, because their logo is very symmetrical, because it's that, it doesn't matter which way you know, round it is, it's this just big red T and it is absolutely symmetrical. I made a persistence of vision sign. Now, I don't know how many of those were around in 1996. I think this might have been one of the first ones. And basically speaking, it was a row of LEDs, the microcontroller, the resistor per LED uh, and the basic power supply and speed control. And uh, if you, it just looked at a shimmering vertical line of LEDs, but when your eye passed it, you saw the logo, the T would appear, because it was basically just replaying the image of that letter T sequentially and repeatedly, and it looked very good, actually. Their logo was absolutely just, it worked so well in the, the persistence of vision display. It's a shame they didn't uh, click with this. It would have been, they, they would probably have been one of the first beer companies with a persistence of vision display. But alas, my lack of professional business approach uh, and their lack of willingness to really take the risk of prototypes and being at the edge of LED technology at the time meant that it didn't really go anywhere. Oh, not to worry.